Okay, so now in this video, let's save our refresh token inside our Redis cache. So let me remove this client.set and client.get from the app.js file because it is not required here. Since we are not using client here, so we can simply remove this thing from here. We can only keep the required statement here. And now let's go to our JWT helper file here. And here, firstly, when do we want to use this client here? So firstly, let me import it and then I'll talk about when do we want to use it. So const client equal to require and here we want to require it from the init redis file that is this file and now we can use this client inside any of these functions here so firstly when do we want to use this client here we want to use this client whenever we sign a new refresh token because whenever we sign a new refresh token or we generate a new refresh token we want to store it inside redis cache so that at some point later down the line, if we want to blacklist that token, we have the user ID as the key and the value would be that refresh token. So since in this sign refresh token, this user ID is coming here as a parameter. So we can use this user ID as the key and the value would be the refresh token that is generated by this JWT sign method here. That is this token here. So this part of the code handles the JWT error and then after that we are simply resolving the promise here. That is this promise here. We are resolving it here and we are passing back the token. But here we do not want to pass the token directly back. Instead what we want to do, firstly we want to save it inside our Redis cache here. So client.set like this. The key would be the user ID that is coming here as a parameter inside this sign refresh token function here we can see it is coming here and now the value would be this token here like this and now there is a third parameter to this set function here and that is the callback and the callback would take error as the first parameter and reply as the second parameter that is what is coming as a reply from redis so what we can do we can check if there is an error so if error if there is some error then what we want to do we want to simply reject this call that is we simply we do not want to sign the token here or we do not want to resolve the this promise here with the token but instead we want to reject this promise by saying the error here so we can simply say reject and here we can simply create a new error by using the create error package dot internal server error like this because we do not want to actually send that what happened here. That is what is exactly is inside the error object here. We simply want to set an internal server error message back to the client. And what more we can do? If there is an error, we can simply log it inside our console. So let me move this reject inside this block here like this. And now we can simply console log the error for our logging purposes. So error dot message like this. And then finally, we want to return from here, from here like this or else if there is no error. So here what we can do, we can resolve this promise. So instead of resolving it here, we can resolve this promise here itself like this with the token. And now let's go to our Redis commander here. Let's refresh it. We have this key value pair that is foo bar. So let me delete this key like this. And now we have an empty Redis cache here. So let's go back here and let's go to our rest.http and since this uh, sign refresh token is used in both registration and logging route. So whenever we try to log in, we'll have this key value pair saved inside our Redis memory. So let's go here. Let's make a login request here and we see that we get back this access token and refresh token. And if you look at this refresh token, the, it's, it ends with k y v i so let's go to our redis commander here let's refresh it so this time we see that we have the key here and the value is the same refresh token that we tried to store inside this redis database and the key is the id of the user so now what more we can do with this uh, setting thing here so let me close the files which i don't require here so instead of setting this token forever since this token is valid only for one year so we can use the expiration time here also inside this set method 
so here what we need to do we need to pass in the third parameter as ex that is the expiration time as i have told you in the previous video where we installed redis and talked a little bit about redis and now we need to pass in the time in seconds here and since the validity of this token is one year so what we can do we can say 365 days into 24 hours into 60 minutes into 60 seconds so this is the expiration expiry of this token so if we go here we can see that the previous token was stored with a time to life of minus one which means forever that is this token or this key value pair would be kept in redis forever but if we provide this thing here that is ex with this expiration time then this token or this key value pair would be stored in redis for only a single year so let's again make a login request here so let me make a request we are getting back the access and refresh tokens so let's go back to our redis commander so let's refresh it so the key was same so that key was overwritten here and we see that it has a time to live of 31535993 seconds and you can also verify it so let me copy it here so control c and let's go to google and let me paste it here uh, seconds to days like this and we see that this many seconds are equivalent to these many days and that is the time which we want since our token is only valid for one year so this is how you should set your key value pair inside redis when you whenever you are using it for refresh tokens so now let's go back to our application again and now when do we want to use this token or when do we want to use this uh, redis cache that is this key value pair that is stored inside redis we want to use this whenever we are generating a new pair of access and refresh token using this refresh token so we need to go to our verify refresh token method here so here instead of directly resolving this user id here what we need to do since we have the user id from the payload.audience since we have verified the token here and if the verification of the token is complete this payload contains all the claims inside the jwt that is the refresh token and we extracted the user id from that payload and now what we want to get we want to search our redis database for this key that is if this key exists in our database so we can say client dot get and which key we want to get we want to get the user id key from this database and then we have a callback here that is the error and result like this and if there is an error so if error we can simply log it inside our console so console.log error dot message like this and we want to reject this promise for verification of refresh token by saying reject and here we can simply create an error that is create error dot internal server error like this because we do not want to send the actual error message back to the client and now we can return from this if block here if that was the case but else what we need to do we need to check this result because this result contains the actual value of that key and the key was user id and the value of that uh, key was the refresh token that is stored inside redis so now what we want to do we want to check if refresh token that is coming here as an argument here that is to verify the refresh token if this refresh token is equal equal to that result that is coming from the key because this result is also a refresh token so if both are valid then we simply want to return resolve user id like this it should be like this like this and if that is not the case that is if this token doesn't does not match the value coming from the redis database then we simply want to reject the promise so we can say reject and here we can simply say create error dot unauthorized because and we can simply remove this resolve from here so now why i'm uh, rejecting this error here that is reject create error unauthorized here and why i was doing internal server error here because this error means that there is some internal problem with your server or with your redis 
that is why we are rejecting here with this error message that is internal server error whereas this reject create error unauthorized means that the token coming from the redis and the token coming inside this function as a parameter then we need to reject this promise since both the tokens are not equal so this is how we validate refresh tokens from redis so now let's validate all this logic here so let me save this file here and while I'm generating this refresh token, what I'll do, I'll change this time here. So since our refresh token expires in one year, so let our refresh token expire in 30 seconds. And this is for demonstration purposes here. And let me also change it back to 30 seconds because we want our token to expire from Redis in 30 seconds. So let me save this file here. And now let's go to our REST client here. And here, firstly, we'll make a login request here. And we get a pair of access and refresh tokens. So this is the refresh token route. So let me use this refresh token here and let me paste it here. So let me paste it here. So let's send it again. So we see that we get a new pair of refresh and access token. So let me copy the new refresh token here and let me try sending a request back with the same refresh token. So let me send it back. And this time we see that it is unauthorized because what happens here is this that there is a new refresh token present inside our database and it has a time to live of 14 seconds as we see. So it has eight seconds. So if we can quickly uh, refresh our tokens here, so let me make a request. So we are able to uh, retrieve a pair of new access and refresh tokens. So let me copy the new refresh token and the old refresh token won't work here. And we see that we have a new refresh token and it's time to live is 18 seconds. So that after 18 seconds, this token would not be valid. So let me copy this token from here and let's wait for this time to expire or for this uh, token to expire here inside this uh, database. So the token has been expired here. And now let's go back to our refresh token route and let me paste it here. And we see 401 unauthorized, though the token has already been expired because we have provided an expiration time in the token itself. So guys, this is how you use Redis for blacklisting tokens. In case you wouldn't have used Redis, then all the refresh tokens that were issued, you would have reused them till their expiry time. But now since we have Redis, only the newly generated refresh token would be able to generate a new pair of access and refresh tokens. So in the next video, let's see that how do we log out a user.